Well, have a good uh, a good time up there. McCall is a beautiful uh, place to go and to get refreshed. And you make your husband's mission three days. You come back, they always treat you real nice. And, uh, <laughs> no, it's a blessed thing, and, and uh, you'll be blessed. We'll pray that it doesn't snow too much. <laughs> too much. All right, God is good. Well, I'll tell you, I'd like to just worship the Lord all morning in song this morning and pray for one another and prophesy over one another. We need to do that. Sister, yes. Um, I would just like to have a friend named Carol Morris who was just um, diagnosed with ovarian cancer. And um, her family is just devastated. And so um, I'm going to try to be talking to her this week. Uh, I would appreciate it for everybody to keep her in prayer. Mm -hmm. All right. Her first name was Carol. Carol Morris. Is she a married lady? Yes. She's just been, she, her first husband passed away. She's remarried a couple years ago. And she's really happy. And they're doing Okay. All right. If you would, saints, remember her in your prayers. And let's just lift her before the Lord right now. Father, we've been worshiping you this morning and singing about how great is our God. And the name of Jesus is above every name. All authority in heaven and earth has been given to him. And Lord, we just give you praise and honor, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that in the authority of that name, it's over the name of cancer. And Father, we rebuke that cancer in that woman's body, in Carol's body this morning, Lord. We just rebuke it in the name of Jesus, and we speak healing and restoration to her body. Any damage that's been done, we speak healing to that area, Lord, and restoration back to normality. We speak it, Father, in faith. In the precious name of Jesus and all the Lord's people said, Amen. 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 Well, I've been speaking to you the past uh, few messages. By the way, I forgot to announce it last night. Sister uh, Wanda Davis is ministering for me on Wednesday nights um, for uh, the next few weeks. And I'll tell you, she's... Uh, uh, brought us two messages already on faith and hope and also being married to Bill, but that's a different subject. And it has really been good. It's been anointed. It's been a blessed time. This Wednesday night, this past Wednesday night, we had 74 people. 27 adults, I believe, and the rest was our children. So I want you to know, you know, we've got a Almost a different church here on Wednesday nights. Almost. And God is blessing, speaking and planting His Word into our children. Do not release them in your prayer. Keep them lifted before the Lord. And we did, we had 27 adults here Wednesday night, which is really good for a Wednesday night. And I want to encourage you to keep coming because. Wanda's bringing a, an anointed foundational word, and it's just been really, really good. I was really ministered to on uh, Wednesday night, as I always am, and uh, I want to encourage you to come out. You'll really be blessed. It's not a matter, ladies and gentlemen, on Wednesday nights of numbers, but in, inside the numbers are people that get ministered to. Yeah. That's what it's all about, and... Uh, of course, our children are a blessing. So I want to encourage you to come out Wednesday night. And uh, Sister Wanda is an anointed minister of God, and you'll really be blessed. Anyhow, I've been speaking the last few services about knowing God. It's a subject that over the past year I'm drawn back to more and more. As uh, I mature in, in the Lord and in age, I learn more about him, I get to know him more, but I also learn that there's a lot of surface knowledge with God. Any knowledge of God is good, but as we um, go through life's situation, there's a stronger truth about knowing God 
and knowing him more intimately. And uh, God comes to us in many different forms and fashions. And based upon certain personalities, uh, we don't receive him this way, but we receive him this way. But we need to have an open receiver to seeing God and knowing him. And we've talked, I don't know a better word in the Eng English language to use than disguise, but when we say disguised in America, we think about something that may be uh, undercover or may be a little bit in darkness, but our God is a God of light. But God comes to us in many disguises or different coverings. For example, he can come through you and in the person of your spouse, or through children, or through prisoners in jail, or many, many different forms and fashions. And so, I want us just to be open. Turn with me this morning back to a foundational scripture in the book of Proverbs, chapter 25. Look with me, please, in verse 2. Now, there are many, many, many scriptures in the Word of God about how that God comes to us in a form of concealment. Concealment so that we can look for him and find him and know him and learn of him and let him reveal himself to us in many different disguises or many different ways. Now, I'm going to conclude this whole service right now and then we'll do the sermon. But it's this way is... When you and I get to know God in all of these different facets, it's an expansion of our love for Him and the knowledge of His love for us. But what happens is, as we look for Him, we learn Him and we become more sensitive to Him. And you'll find out that God doesn't want you to know Him just because He's all-powerful. All he wants you to know that he's all-powerful, but he doesn't want you to know him just that way. He wants you to know him in multiple different aspects because you'll need those different facets. You'll need those different aspects of knowing him to get through your life uh, better or uh, with, that, with less problems. Proverbs chapter 25, verse 2. It is, the, I'm going to read today from the New King James, it is the glory of God to conceal a matter or a thing. But the glory of kings is to search out a matter. Now, this, this is my Bible, and I'm going to rest my hand upon this Bible. So now my hand is rested upon this Bible. Someone close that door, please. It rests with God to conceal with kings and to search out. So it rests with God to conceal. In other words, it's just the way God does. It rests upon Him. I've had God come to me and speak to me directly through my wife. I've had God come and speak directly to me through people on the platform. I've had God come and speak directly through me to a person that I really didn't want to be around that day. And so we've got to be open and keep looking for God in everything. One of the highest achievements is for you and I to search God out. For example, God came to planet earth as a baby the bible says and was raised as a child and he was a carpenter's son and that's the type of disguise that I'm talking about it's not that God is trying to conceal himself so that you can't find him it's so that you will find him and so many people didn't receive him because he was the carpenter's son. But it's our responsibility to...
forget. It is the glory of God to conceal a matter. But the glory of kings is to search out a matter. God wants us to see him in balance. Now, when Jesus came, he didn't come as a priest. He didn't come as a learned scholar. He came as a carpenter's son in simplicity. And that's so that we could see him in balance. God wants you to see that he encompasses everything. That he's everywhere. There's nowhere that God isn't. And so he doesn't want you overawed in his power. Even though he will confirm the gospel with signs and wonders by his power. But he doesn't want you just awed strictly by his power. Because if you are awed strictly by his power, and it's all that you're looking for, all that you're shooting for, you become single-minded and you can't see the greatness or the expanse of God. You see, God wants you to know him in all that he is, all the facets that he is, so that you can be built up and strengthened by him in every area of your life. The Bible says he draws us with his power. Now, the Holy Spirit draws us, but you know, as we saw in the book of Acts in the early church, the apostles, they performed many signs and wonders. And what happened was that drew the people to God, and it was God drawing them through the display of his power. The gospel was preached, and they would be convicted of their sin by the Holy Spirit, who is God, and then they would be saved. So God uses his power to draw us worth with, according to Romans chapter 15 and Hebrews chapter 2. But he doesn't want you to think that he will crush you if you make a mistake. Now this is too simple, and I'm just not going to go on with it until we make sure that we got this home. Let me tell you what I mean. I was raised in a preacher's home. And every time my dad preached, I felt convicted because I had done something wrong as a 12-year-old or a 10-year-old. And every time he preached, every, which was every night, at some revival somewhere, I would run to the altar because I had seen God's great power work through my dad and through his ministries. And I saw lives change and finances come in and all of that type of thing take place. So all I could see was God's power. He was a power for God. So every time that I messed up, I expected God to crush me. You see, I focused almost exclusively on God's power because my father was an evangelist and it's what I saw was demonstrations of the power of God. And I would hear the gospel come forth and I saw thousands of people get saved through my dad's ministry. So that's the way that I saw God as this awesome but powerful God. Therefore, because he was so powerful, I knew that every time that I messed up, he was out to get me. That's the way I saw it. You see, God doesn't want you just to focus on him, on his powerfulness. He wants you to have a firm, good hold of that, but he wants you to know that there's more to him than just his power. Now, the other way is, is his blessings. He, doesn't, he is a blessing God. He will bless you in every area of your life. Listen, not a area or some areas, but every area. He is a God who blesses us. We're blessed with all spiritual blessings and gifts, if you will. And he is able to bless, yes he is, in every area of your life. All that we need, everything from 
healing to finances, whatever the case may be. He then, because he's all powerful and that he is a blessing God, what's this? He's able to bless you and to help you and to save you in any problem that you have. Amen. Any problem. Doesn't matter what it is. Doesn't matter what nature it is. God is able to help you because he's all powerful and he's a blessing God. But he doesn't want you to receive from him just on the basis of what you can get for him, from him. Because if you do, you'll get out of balance. You won't focus on the power of God, and you'll just be after blessing, after blessing, after blessing. And let me tell you the downfall of this. Your God will bless you and bless you and bless you, but you'll start getting unbalanced. And you'll feel like if the blessings are not still pouring in, I must be out of relationship with God. You see, your God is a balanced God. He comes to us in many different forms and facets so that we'll know Him in His fullness. Now, He wants you to know that you can get blessings from Him and that He enjoys blessing you. But He wants you balanced. Men, preachers, anointed men of God who get caught up too much just in the blessing of finances. Now, they may be called to teach on financing. Don't misunderstand on finances. But nevertheless, if a person gets, who's not called to do that specifically gets caught up in finances, he can become a one-track mind. And he'll miss God in many other blessing ways in his life because he's unbalanced. Now, God does not want us to be satisfied just in our intellectual curiosity either. God wants you to know Him intimately. You know, it's just like, well, God is kind of like Pastor a Jigsaw Puzzle. I think all of us Christians in some form or fashion have said that. And here's another piece that we put into the puzzle. That's true as we learn, we grow, and we develop in God. But let me tell you what. If you get to where you are walking and living your life in that mentality, you'll stay in the intellectual realm more than you will in the spirit realm. You see, God is encompasses everything. He is great. We need to be open to know Him more and more. Many Christians get bummed out and get depressed because they don't, realize God in the area that they know Him as much as they used to. They don't see the blessings or they don't see the power or they don't feel His presence like they always do, even though God is there. Where if we learn to look for Him in all of the, the different ways, the secret ways that He comes to us, it'll bring fullness in our relationship with Him. Now, we know and we say this, you hear it preached somewhere in the pulpit all the time. But God does not look at me and you the way we look at each other. That's right. Now remember, that's really, really important. So knowing God is also realizing how he's looking at you. And a lot of people miss God in this area. We're trying to see him just for one aspect that he does. That's the way we look at people. You know, we say, well, Brother Jim does this, and Sister Sally does this, and Brother Bob does this, and that's how we know them. And we've got to realize that's now how God is looking at us. You remember the story all of us preachers use it about Samuel was asked, you know, to anoint the next king. And so he goes to Jesse's house and he brings, starting with the oldest, he brings the seven uh, best looking sons and all of that and tall and all of that. And, and uh, God says to the prophet, Samuel says, that's not the guy. And uh, so all seven sons had gone before him and he didn't select them. And they said, 
And do you have another son? He said, yeah, we got this little ruddy David out here. You know, he's out here in the field with the sheep, and he's the youngest one. And Samuel said, bring him in. And God says, that's the guy. 